Cougar has evolved in this improved second generation guise into a more credible contender that'll be equally attractive both to Qashqai class crossover customers and RAV4 style soft roading SUV buyers. There's sharper styling, a much nicer cabin and extra technology that segment buyers will like. In short, if you're shopping in this sector, this is still a car you very much need to consider. For years, a Ford Cougar was the mid-sized compact crossover that other brands turned to if they were developing a car in this class and they wanted it to be good to drive. The Mark 1 model was out on its own in this respect, but when in 2013 Ford had to make this second generation version slightly larger and heavier, they diluted a few of that original car's virtues in a manner not further helped by the need to incorporate electric power steering. Completely solving this issue and returning this Ford to an unchallenged position when it comes to driving dynamics in a crossover of this kind is a job that the eventual replacement version of this model will ultimately take on. For the time being though, a quick fix for those who care about this issue lies in the introduction of an athletic ST-Line variant that features a far more focused suspension setup. Whatever the spec you select, it's clear once you try out a secondary road that this car still knows how to thread a series of corners together. If you were familiar with final versions of the pre-facelift Cougar, you won't find a great deal that's different beneath the bonnet of this improved model, except for the installation of a new entry-level diesel unit at the foot of the range, a 1.5-litre TDCI power plant that sacrifices quite a bit of torque for quite a bit of extra efficiency. Most likely buyers, though, will give this engine no more than a passing glance on their way to sign up for one of the 2-litre TDCI diesels. Here, the volume 150 PS unit offers a choice of front-wheel drive or the intelligent all-wheel drive system you'll need if you want the option of the PowerShift Auto gearbox. Back in 2013, the least powerful 140 PS version of this unit managed 53.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 139 grams per kilometre of CO2 when mated to front wheel drive. Today, the equivalent 150 PS 2 litre TDCI power plant returns 60.1 miles to the gallon and 122 grams per kilometre of CO2. Expect the 150 PS models to get to 62 miles an hour in around 10 seconds en route to around 120 miles an hour. This Pokia 180 PS version, which only comes with all-wheel drive, improves that showing to 9.2 seconds and 126 miles an hour in manual form. Now we should talk about petrol power too, though green pump fueled engines have never been particularly popular with Cougar buyers. This part of the range is built around a 1.5T EcoBoost unit offering either 120, 150 or 182 PS. The lesser two variants offered only with manual transmission and front wheel drive. We should finish by talking about the all wheel drive system since that is a Cougar strength. As you'd expect in a light SUV, the whole power distribution process is completely seamless. So if you find yourself somewhere slippery and need a bit of extra traction, it's all automatically done for you and there are no fiddly knobs, buttons or levers to manipulate. You can see why facelift styling updates are necessary. Take a look at the original version of this second generation Cougar. It's a bit bland, isn't it, compared to this revised model? And being bland is an inexcusable fault in today's highly fashion-conscious crossover segment. Up front, the bolder nose section follows the styling direction set by the brand's larger edge model, dominated as it is by this large trapezoidal grille, the final finish of which varies depending on the trim level you've decided upon. High set headlamps with smart LED daytime running light strips flank this opening and the main lights can be upgraded as they have been here to include a bi-xenon adaptive front lighting system if you're prepared to pay a little more. And at the wheel, well, it's something of a masterclass in demonstrating just how much you can change both the feel and the general ergonomics of an automotive interior without altering its basic design one jot. Come to this car from the original second generation model and you're going to wonder where all the buttons have gone. A proper infotainment touchscreen setup can get rid of much of that kind of clutter as it has here. 
Someone familiar with the pre-facelift version of this Ford will also notice that there's now more storage space in the lower center console area. Extra stowage areas freed up by the installation of an electronic handbrake. Time to take a seat in the back. This central transmission tunnel is usefully low. And I think it's important to note that there's as much room for legs, knees and heads as in the best of this Cougar's rivals. This bench can't feature Volkswagen Tiguan-like sliding functionality, but the backrest does recline for greater comfort on longer journeys. And this optional panorama roof gives this part of the interior a light and airy feel. Finally, let's take a look at the boot. Now, once the restyled hatch is raised, a 456 litre boot is revealed. In summary then, it's clear that Ford means business when it comes to this class of car. And if you doubt that, then you need to try this one.